ants ants got into my sugar oh my god so annoying those ants like a lot of them uh not too many they're small there's they have these like mini ants like there's ants are already small but they have these little mini ants here that are like they're the smallest little ants i've ever seen they can get into anything <laughs> And ants are already small and can already get into anything, but you close and this, these little ones are just like, where the hell do you like, it's almost like, you know, as if they were like born inside the thing. Uh -huh. And you're just, which is a weird thought, but you know, maggots are like that, but you never imagine anything like that with ants. Hello. <laughs> the two voices from the darkness. Salted we, by ants, they can't deal with the real life. Yeah. I'm going to turn on my video. Hold on. Come back and see if the Dandy Brothers get through the mini ant attack. The what? The mini ant attack. Oh. There's definitely a lot of mini ants here. <laughs> they definitely attack. I was telling him about, no, yeah, there's the attack ants. There's the big air ants and there's the attack ants that bite your feet. And then there's those tiny, tiny, tiny little ants that you're just like, are they even, like, how are they that small? But, um... Oh, bite packs a punch. They're so small. How are you doing, Sweep? I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, highly anticipating this meeting. I. Uh, you got something cool to show us? Yeah, well, it's been around for a bit, but I just haven't shown you guys. And now I think is the time to, for whatever reason. And the most important part we may or may not be able to see, which is the dividing it into seven missions. Um, just because we were using it to test with OCL and we, it's sort of private in their own, in their own segment, let's say. So he's just seeing if he can pull something out and just show, cause it's, I think it is an important piece of the puzzle. Here they are, the dynamic duo. How long has it been since the three of us have been in a Zoom? It's been a while. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. And both you guys are in Costa Rica. We are. Yeah. Both you guys are in the same house. <laughs> no, we're in different houses. Oh, you're in different houses. Yeah, he's in a different place for this month. Ah. And Seb's is staying here with me, Sebastian. Yep. I went for a dip in the pool. I really wanted to be. I wish I had the car today, Ram. I wanted it. I was so annoyed. When you say something, I was at the house twice. You're at the house once today. What was the second time? Oh, yeah. I was at the house once. So Nova's just fixing to try to get access to the seven step part. So that's why he's not here right now. He will join us when I guess he has it done or or not done. How about a little how about a little attunement? Um, do you want to lead us through a little bit of a meditation, maybe Zamir? And I can do that. Um, what about Ram? Guys, what about me? Are you ready? <laughs> so we'll just start by closing your eyes and connecting to the inflow and outflow of your breath through the nostrils. Just check that your sit bones are nicely rooted on the seed and feel almost like a invisible string connecting your head up to the sky, dropping down through the spine and into the perineum. You 
you're going to bring your attention just to the front part of the spine. So inside the body, the front of the spine, visualizing this open column. Some people see it as being moved through with light, with breath, whatever works for you, but just feel your self breathing in and out through this column in the inner, inner spine. As you're breathing in and out through this column of the spine, softening through the internal organs of the belly, softening the kidneys, softening the groin. As you inhale, you can feel the rising energy through that column. Exhale, descending energy through that column. And just start to gently lean or bring your presence into your back body. I feel that there's a slight engagement in the back body, a presence in the back body as you breathe in and out. Share a prayer. O oh, brother, father, mother of the cosmos, creator of all that moves in light, source of the shimmering sound that touches us. O oh, breathing life of all, in the breeze and in the whirlwind, in the roar and in the whisper, we hear your name. O oh, radiant one, you shine inside us, outside us. Even darkness shines when we remember. O oh, radiant one, our identities unravel in you, and you give it back to us as a lesson. Wordless action, silent potency, where ears and eyes awaken, there heaven comes. O oh, brother, father, mother of the cosmos, Amen. Just open your eyes. It's like we've been joined by a special guest. Hello. Hey, Noah. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Thank you, Zamir. That was great. Um, perhaps if I just give a, a bit of an intro and then maybe let everyone sort of speak and, and, and then maybe we'll go into the demonstration, uh, mostly led by Nova, just to show what we've got. So just to give context to this, uh, Nova and I have been working together on some software programs and what we're about to show you is for now called Chatstream. And it's basically a team building system within a chat room that you can program with uh, goals, values, combo type, a lens, a time limit, and a point score. And then you can put them in a seven step order. And then you can teach 12 facilitators who then can go to 12 people on a team. So one person can set out an instruction or uh, a mission, basically anything you want to put there. And it goes out through 144 people at the same time, if wanted. And so uh, Zamir Ramayan, I've known, I don't know how long, but it must be going on 
12, 13, 14, 15 years, something like 2000, 2000. I don't know. No, not that far back. So long, long enough for us to have many adventures and experiences together. And in many ways, they understand at least what I've been working on better than anyone out there. And together they have a pretty formidable assessment system of critical analysis and seeing what is and what is not, especially when concerned with Captain Sweet. <laughs> so there's a lot of shared context here and I wouldn't been wanting you guys to meet uh, Noah for a long time, Nova, sorry. And uh, Nova's created his own game, the game of planets, which I've been playing a number of times and I've tried to get you guys in a number of times, but it's, it's, I think it's a great game. Uh, but he built the whole thing himself, you know, and just the, the amount of kudos for him to, to have the ability to do the math, the design, the programming, wow. everything. Um, and now he's been doing the sole programming on this chat stream. So I've been giving the designs, he's been building it, and then we sort of go back and forth with sort of looks, but we're missing people. It's not where we would want it, but it's at a start, it's at a place to then you can edit and add whatever goes along since both these people also have very good aesthetic taste um hopefully they'll be uh nice to us in terms of how it looks but it is a, a first draft in a sense so um how about over to zamir how about everyone sort of check in sort of see, say where you're at and then once we've done that um then maybe nova can go ahead with the demonstration yeah i'm doing well um I feel pretty in the flow with my life and my projects. Have been spending more time on computer screens than I would like. I'm realizing that. Um, and I'm sure we can all empathize with that <laughs> on some level. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the chat stream. I have used the um, Choose a Remedy a number of times. I really like that tool. Um, it's just great. I mean, when you want to access that kind of like in particular kind of brand of like divination or insight that Elijah has, I think it, it really does serve the purpose. I do like being able to save them. Um, you know, of course, I could suggest some improvements, but it really serves the purpose. And I've appreciated having that available uh, when I've wanted to go use it. So that's it for me. Mr. Ramayan. Hey, um, yeah, I mean, right now I'm like full force on launching um, the next iteration of Veeam. It's been, it's been a lot. I'm still in it right now. So that's why I'm, I'm you know, best to be full present, but we just like launched uh, our NFT, our Genesis NFT collection two days ago. And um, a lot to do, a lot of development work to happen, but I'm excited to see where this integration happens now. I feel like a lot of what we're doing and what we're building at Beam, the creation of DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, the understanding of how NFTs really are the next um, wave in how we protect and secure and transact digital assets, um, looking at how the future social networks now are going to work with uh, NFT-based DAOs and um, our voltage protocol, which is uh, solving for creative remixing on the internet. So we're, we're in the weeds of it right now with a with a pretty amazing team. And I know that um, the work that Inflammatrix is doing has a lot of integration and overlap. And I'm excited to see what you've built so we can look at where those connection points happen. Wow, awesome. Yeah. Mr. Nova. Uh, hello, my name is Nova. I'm checking in, feeling pretty good. Uh, I'm in New Zealand. Uh, I've been here for about two and a half years. I'm from Canada, Vancouver Island originally. Um, and yeah, this uh, I've decided to move here permanently. So I'll be remotely working with everyone from now on because I don't know anyone here <laughs> except for my partner and my, my two girls. Um, and actually my sister lives here too and my nephew, uh, but they're currently in Canada for a few months. She just left a couple days ago. Um, and yeah, I guess um, my world, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm currently taking a bachelor degree in software engineering uh, with a major in game programming. Um, just starting my second year in a couple months. It's a three year program, um, you know, C, Unity, Unreal, all this kind of stuff. Um, 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting into considering getting into NFTs and stuff um, in, in coincidence with my game pro, uh, game development. So started to look into that stuff, uh, but I don't I honestly don't know that much. Um, and yeah, as far as, uh, you know, the platform, me and Elijah have been building, I think we've been building it for, it must be almost two years now. Um, and we had a test group. I don't know if you know that um, with the, you know, they, they were going to test it for us. There was 144 of them. They had a very interesting uh, organization of people, 12 groups of 12. Um, in the end, they wanted us to customize it and change it, kind of tailor it for what they wanted to do, which was really left field from what we were trying to do. So um, it wasn't a very good test, to be honest. And, and yeah, so we're looking for, for a more proper test of what we really developed. Um, and anyway, yeah, uh, maybe I'll pass the stick back to Elijah for a moment, but I'm, I'm ready to show you what we got as well when needed. Okay. Um, I think one of the things to, to sort of look at is the, you know, sort of different levels of activation of being sort of an end, an end user in it, then being a facilitator in it, then being like a, maybe a knowledge catalyst in it, and then being someone who activates knowledge catalysts kind of thing. And those four levels of, uh, of using the tool. And then I guess at the highest for activating the people who activate the knowledge cat catalyst kind of thing. Um, but that's it, right? Just go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and I, I should say as well, personally, I see this this technology that we're developing as something that has multiple uses. One of them is, you know, facilitators and groups of 12 people and all this kind of thing. Um, and then I think also it can it can double as actually a marketable product for organizations, corporations, and just groups of people who want to use a new communication tool and a new tool to be able to organize each other and, keep, and make decisions. Basically, so we've, we've created a sort of a decision making and organization uh, creating kind of process that they can take themselves through in a board meeting or over a few weeks or in a retreat with a group of people or whatever. So I think it has a lot of uses for sure. And that's kind of where me and Elijah have clashed a little bit. That's why I wanted to bring it up. <laughs> okay. I mean, again, any system, you know, should allow for, in my opinion, flexibility in terms of numbers of people participating. But if you wanted to adapt that to a particular use case, like a shared knowledge community or to a specific function, then you adapt it to a specific function and you create limitations. And that's what you do with any tech. Like you have a protocol level layer and then you have, you know, use case levels that are able to use that function in a specific manner according to how the user wants to use it. So I don't see them as being mutually exclusive. And they should never be mutually exclusive. Just like we're bu we're building a voltage yeah. protocol, which basically allows for remixing of content. You know, we're building our app, Beam app. We're going to use it in a particular way, but we want other people to use that protocol in ways that we haven't thought of, and that's kind of the magic of it. And the way I see the inflow matrix is that it's a, you know, you're basically building hierarchy levels, categorization levels, and language layers, and it's going to be exciting to see how other people adapt that to their own use cases still using inflow matrix as a base layer and then new paradigm toolkit or skc has a pathway of using that and should have a pathway because it's his dream why fuck not right um yeah cool okay shareable oh all right um so yeah uh, what we have is so we've got a uh, basic website, just a front page. Um, I should also say that uh, I'm more of a programmer than a designer. So when it comes to design, uh, it takes me a long time. And uh, honestly, 90% of my time is spent on design and 10% is spent on programming. I would rather spend 100% of my time on the programming. We just have not found a designer to get onto the team yet. So it's been a big waste of time. As yeah, far as, you know, my that's efficiency is, is, is like, 10% right now because <laughs> of that. Uh, but here's a basic website looking thing. Um, you know, you can log in and reset your password, that stuff. So uh, for example, I've, I've logged in as Elijah here and he's already set up a number of different uh, groups um, where you can see he's the super administrator uh, in this mode. You can see some of the, basically the platforms or organizations um, 
that are he's created like planetary guardians media game the inflow matrix operating system new paradigm toolkit fair secret plan <clears throat> um, quite a few others and we also have Lisiel, which is the, the test group that we were working with um, and you'll you can see as well he's you know he's the administrator of each one of those so i could jump into the administration view for example of the very secret plan um, he hasn't created any groups here yet in within this particular platform um, but it's easy enough to do you know you can just pick the group name it delegate a facilitator if you want otherwise it'll just make him the facilitator as well um, but uh, what I'll do is I will jump into, let's see, maybe the, uh, which one have you actually created on? Here we are. So the shared knowledge community. Um, and yeah, the, the header, you know, the graphics for LCL Foundation is still here. That'll obviously be replaced by whatever organization we're talking about. We just haven't, we haven't actually untangled all the code yet from what they wanted us to, to modify it as. We kind of, it was kind of a last minute request on there part to change a bunch of things add a bunch of things so we kind of I, I jumped on that and did it all in a way that i have to actually untangle it now to get it back yeah no, um, I'm looking at it purely as a on a functional level not a ui ux level so yeah. okay so yeah there's a bunch of groups here um you know you can see the groups you can jump in as the group administrator which elijah is as well um you manage your team currently this team doesn't have any members apparently uh we can go to Let's see. Maybe none of these groups have members right now. No, I haven't. I haven't put anyone in yet. Okay. Um, well, essentially, once you add a group, uh, you can you know see see the members, add new members to your team, that sort of stuff. Here, uh, it's pretty easy. You just put in their name, and then they can get a confirmation email, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah what we're you know really what we've built here is the mission system so there's kind of a couple different ways the seven mission step is the thing that we designed um and this free missions thing is is kind of the the other uh use case that he wanted so well, if i go just return here you can see there's seven steps here obviously step one comes first and they're labeled to start uh, you know, the, the start, the setup, the build up, the crescendo, the ease out, connect and unify, and the finish. I imagine you may be familiar with those terms. So once you end up creating one, um, you can create the next one, et cetera. Uh, let me take you through that real quick. So uh, pretty simple process to create a mission. Uh, you can put on a mission objective, perhaps an introduction to the platform. Uh, and then you can set a time limit. If you set it to zero, it just you know it goes forever until they close the the, the chat stream. Otherwise, you can say, oh, let's let's restrict it to three days or something like that. Um, and then this mission stages is something we added recently. It's kind of a test thing. Um, basically, it allows you to go through the same mission with multiple stages within. But uh, let's just keep it to one for now. Um, so you can put in a question. Simple question, perhaps. Uh, and then you'll be able to click, uh, select the value lens, conversation type, conceptual lens. Um, there's the random pick, of course, uh, where you can keep picking random ones until you like it. Uh, or you can choose you know, from all the various value lenses. Uh, and conversation type, same thing. I'll just pick a random one. Let me take a moment. I haven't actually uh, got this on Cloudflare or anything else, so it's a little bit slow on my test server. <laughs> uh, let's try that again. Perhaps choose. So maybe an infrastructure lens, learning lens, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. Maybe explanation. And then conceptual lens, same thing. Uh, we can just pick a random one, perhaps emotions, sure. So once you have your three, uh, you're able to continue. And that gives your conversation focus, as it's saying here. Um, then you can either pick to schedule the mission or you can manually start it. We can schedule the mission, perhaps um, yeah, Thursday at 9th. Uh, at, uh, 
twenty hundred. So also we built in um, some time zone kind of dealing stuff here. So whatever time zone the facilitator is is in, they're able to set the mission here. But when someone logs in and looks at, oh, when's our next mission? It's it's in their local time zone, you know. So all that set up. Um, and yeah, say you want twenty one hundred hours. Something may have gone wrong there. So uh, essentially, that's the process, though, at least. Um, you can set up the missions one after another. And we have a couple ways to do this. Um, that's sort of still profiling the, the other use case that we had with, with Lucille. Um, but the idea is like one of the ideas we had uh, originally is to create a seven mission step system that would take them through ideation, assessment, a debate definition, prioritization, alignment, and appointment. Um, do you want to talk about anything specifically at this point, Elijah, or should I keep going here? Um, well, just the fact that we were then looking at the first uh, conversation ideation, uh, Nova had come up with a support. Is there a way to show that, the support button? Yeah, so what I'll do, actually, I'll log out of here um, and I'll jump in as myself. Um, so, for instance, I'm a member of the seeding global communities thing. Um, so, for, if you want to, if we want to jump right into the chat room itself, the chat stream technology, um, here's that burning question, and you can see the three lenses that were chosen for this particular conversation. Um, and then you can say, oh, okay, yep, that's pretty interesting. Okay, I see the question. I see this, and all of this is still accessible within. There's a burning question there again, and you can still see those three lenses here if you, when you if you forget what they are or something. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is step one. So in step one, each of the seven steps, or beyond that, once we build this out more, for each of the seven steps at this point, they each have a diff different mechanics built in in order to facilitate the type of the conversation type that they're currently in. So mission step one is the start. It's really all about ideation and brainstorming. Um, so kind of just get the different ideas out. Uh, and the mechanic we've added for that is just a support button. So once you click the support button, um, that person gets a couple of these points up here. Uh, you get a few points if someone else supports it. And if enough people support it within the group, it becomes something that's you know supported by the group. Um, a bunch of people get extra points and it becomes kind of uh, solidified. So as when you enter step mission step two, uh, the things that were most supported um, are given the most attention and those are used for the other mechanics to start kind of diving deeper in that uh, with assessment uh, and to the mission steps builds on the previous uh, using specialized mechanics for each step in order to move the the, the converse through the conversation types so that the organization or group or whatever um, is able to take a question perhaps or a goal um, or a mission you know, whatever they're trying to do, they can take it through the seven step process all the way from ideation to, you know, at the very end where they appoint people on the synergy wheel um, in order to kind of represent different parts of the project. Um, and that, this is, of course, all just one use case scenario, as you'd say, um, but that's kind of the, the initial one that we built. Okay. And this final screen here isn't quite what I would want as the final screen where the convo type I think should be actually be a bar and very prominent. So the aesthetics of the actual chat room aren't quite at least that I would want. Um, but there's a number of parts along the way that need to sort of get changed. Mm -hmm. Wait, is this a chat? Is this a chat room or is yeah. this people just stating specific objectives? Because the chat if it's a chat room, well, then you're not going to have a support button on every time someone says, hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, like most chats are individual function, individual things. So unless you're trying to redefine chat itself, that seems like more of a UI screen for people to support proposals than to actually chat. And I would separate those functions out completely. Well, people, because let's say you only got four supports, you wouldn't be supporting, hey, how are you doing? You're only supporting an idea in the whole chat that you actually want to support. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, um, it, it appears as a chat room, uh, but, um, you know, the way this is framed is, is they're going to use this technology of this 
system or whatever in order to take their take their company or take their organization through a seven step process and they're you know they're going to be reading about each process um, and effectively they may be paying for this at some point as well so I, I don't think in the end they're going to be using it as just like a, a chat kind of thing it's supposed to be you know time a timed discussion at this point in order to come up with perhaps um, the ideas for the next company's product or you know the name of their product or something like this there's going to be a goal um, for the actual chat itself so that they end up supporting each other's uh, you know best ideas and stuff and by the time the, the okay. chat room is in some sometimes it might be not 11 days it might be 25 minutes only you know and then they move on to the second stage so that they can do the whole thing within one day for example got it okay that makes sense Yeah, I mean, I think um, the challenges that I'm seeing here is that is how many steps have to be taken concurrently and separately in order to get here. Um, it just seems like a uh, the education process for using this seems very high right now. Um, and what I would like to see in the evolution of this is um, how do we shorten that education process? How do we shorten it so that someone comes in and the onboarding mechanism and the way that they're able to create to get here doesn't take like 13 or 14 steps, right? Um, you know, could it be one form? Like when you go into Slack or when you want something and you create a new channel, all the things are basically there in one channel. What's the channel name? What's the channel description? What's the channel point? What's the this? What's the that? You click it, you spool it up, you create a channel and you go. Right when you have to click through so many different objectives to move to a different stage, people don't know what's coming next. And when you don't know what's coming next, you have a high level of drop off and apprehension in tech. Um, and so, kind of front loading the creation mechanism in a simpler way to allow for someone to just see the parameters and fields right away, fill them out, and spool it up and get here faster is one of my, I think, biggest pieces of feedback to allow because this is your juice, right? Like your juice is. I'm here, there's combo types, we're having a conversation, I wanna see what I support and I wanna move it forward. So like, how can you get to this interface faster? Well, wouldn't, wouldn't that be sort of like the end user, the, the 12 of the 12 would be sort of invited by a facilitator into something. So that facilitator is setting the tone for bringing that person in. So Got it. Be an entry, so you're not, the, when you're an entry from the user, there'd be an entry from the facilitator, then there'd be the entry like yeah, the higher level like, let's say it's you and you're going, okay, you know, I want to put forth a program where we people are make veams in each mission. And then they do actually all these fun things. And in seven missions, they have this incredible sort of experience kind of thing. So yeah. that's going to, you're going to need a bit of design. You're going to need some thought at that level. Then got you it. or whoever goes to the facilitators and go, this is what you're doing. So now you got a lot less they have to do. You're just saying, this is it. That's what yeah. you do. And then Got the it. end user, they're the ones coming in the quickest saying, come in this door, this is what's going on here. Got it, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, I can drop that. Yeah, I'll show you real quick. Um, yeah, I like, mean, from, like from the just user's to, point like of Like at view. the level of you, to me, it's again, it's like larger programs. How do you get a bunch of people to go through a series of missions and then design like what missions would those be? What, what are the outputs you wanna get done? And then you design a whole program with it as a, like a test group to show this is what you can do. Because I think, as you said, like this is more of an sort of educational um, resource tool. It's not just an app that people are going to use every day kind of thing. Or it could, but then it'd be another function kind of um, Uh, yeah, I, <clears throat> I mean, uh, also, yeah, the, the design, I, the design on this, um, I'm not a designer primarily, so. I, I got that. Um, I mean, you, you, you've created a lot of functionality, which is clear, which is cool. I mean, I'm excited to see where a designer could then actually come in and UI UX and really take this home. Um, yeah. Because I think, again, you've mapped up a ton of functionality 
and somebody who's really good at UI UX coming in here and looking at how to actually streamline process flow based on your objectives and create the best user stories to translate into UI UX would just be so beneficial for this. Because I can see this honestly being a Zoom integration layer as an example, right? Because when you ask, when you're doing conversation types and responding, one of the best ways to do it is actually do what we're doing right now. So yes. this format of us actually talking in real time and then using this as we're talking in Zoom and then filling this out and then regenerating conversation types, talking and then filling out our ideas in Zoom and then supporting and voting. Mm -hmm. I can see that integration being like a very seamless, really good V1. This is a hyper incredible Zoom integration tool that allows all of your company to come together and create missions and assignments may be a really good V1. Yeah. 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 I think we talked about that at one point. Cause yeah, if you, you know, if everyone just logged off Zoom right now and tried to use this platform without exactly. audio, it's like, I can't hear anyone. I can't see anyone. Oh, there's exactly. some typing happening. It's not that interesting. It's not um, that interesting. But, but yeah. As a Zoom integration tool, not, you know, it doesn't have to only be Zoom. It can be Meets and it can be, you know, any video software or even audio software tool. It's like this becomes an adjunct where you can just integrate a Zoom meeting directly into it. And you're like, okay, guys. We're going to set mission, do this, that. Okay, we're ready to invite our users. Let's invite them into this question. You know, and you lay out the process to be aligned with Zoom. It'll probably make the education and facilitation and onboarding way, way easier too. Yeah, and like same same idea. Imagine, you know, they some, you know, perhaps this could be used for negotiation and, uh, you know, collaboration as well. So perhaps two or three organizations are into this. They're using the software to go through a seven-step process to form some sort of organizational alliance and each one of those three groups is on a zoom call with each other or in discord audio call talking about what they should say and what they should support so you, you know you got i think that would be pretty cool as well cool. Yeah. and this is where i think those you know obviously the combo types in the top left are way too small yeah. um I, I i think obviously you probably want to create a simple tool where you could regenerate conversation types within each mission super quick, quickly so if you're doing it on zoom you pull up that window you see the convo flows and then you know, eventually you know, V2, you're just regenerating and using some of those key combo maps that you already have developed, Elijah, and allowing people to have a mirroring between question, conversation type flow, because that's really your primary that you're having here. And without that in the forefront and without the ability to easily regenerate those lenses, to have real dialogue, to then output into chat, to then support, that flow just seems kind of like uh, minimized here. Agreed. wonder if I can... Seeing if we had a, might have an example of that too. Okay, cool. And what's interesting is that like, if you look at a lot of like how DAOs are being built right now, um, go look at Snapshot, look at some of these DAO based tools, go look at DAOmasters.xyz. Basically what, what you've done in that chat room in, in, kind of, in, in, in a similar way is you created a, like a decision-making tool for DAOs which is something that's another pivot to huge space right now um, where DAOs are really trying to figure it out. So I would get into some of these conversation about decentralized autonomous organizations and how they can self-manage and how they can actually generate proposals because the holes are generated. There's a temperature check on those proposals. They then go to the next level where they're voted on. And when they're voted on, the treasury of the DAO, which has tokens, allocates them to developers or people who can actualize on them. So. It just seems like you're developing in many ways, if in, in another lens, a freaking DAO decision-making tool, which could be badass. <laughs> mm. Well, especially if, if maybe it can be linked into what you're creating with the um, FMTs. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I'm looking at through my lens. I'm like, okay, how would I use this in like the Veeam DAO to make decisions? How would I use this to create and structure missions? And, you know, what would I customize in order to make this kind of a temperature check for ideas inside of the DAO that would then go to the next level of a proposal suggestion? Like, it's just, just some thoughts. And then if there was a button maybe on here where you could make beans within each mission, that'd be pretty cool. Or make that be pretty cool. That'd be very cool because then you could have beams of each mission. The mission could be put together into stories. Stories could be adventure, whatever. But it could, it could kind of link into the the immediate feed, like just being able to do everything, kind of like that needs to get done right on the screen. 
You're right back, Lebeau. Z, are you there or you you disappeared? And he's out. And expertise around this kind of subject matter, a lot more than me. Um, I've never really been involved in software development. What, um, I, I, because I, I feel like I don't really want to put too much comment on like sort of the aesthetic and stuff because it seems like that's right now you're in like this beta phase and you're just looking at like how the sequencing is and how things work. And it's not really a point where you're quite looking at the visual layer. Like that's not where Nova's going to put, I mean, it seems like he doesn't want to put right. more time than necessary in that department. Right. Yeah, what I would love to see is a UX UI designer come in, um, you know, take a look at what we have, talk to Elijah about what he wants, come back with a design, and then I'll, I'll hit it with the programming, like, you know, a freight train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, what we have is not what you envisioned as well, Elijah. It's close. You know, some of it is close. Some of it needs to work. It needs to be redesigned, the look of it alone. But the functionality, I think, is very close to what, we're, what we've been talking about. Yeah, and like it has functionality, but you want to yeah, move away. So many points of expansion and, and, and you know, use cases, honestly, that uh, I think now is a good stopping point for functionality and say, okay, let's get some kind of basic design to it so it looks good. It's easy to get into. Um, yeah. and then, and then say, okay, well, what, what's our, yeah, V1 or whatever, what, what are we going to, what's it the is. first thing that we're going to really finish this for? It is. And this is what, you know, I will highly advise for. I've, I've been, the thing that tanked me in my tech company was scope creep and was building too much without getting real user feedback. Um, okay. and if you build too much without real use case feedback, you're just building in a hole. Um, so I really would just, I would spool up design and, and get user, user test cases and see what works and what breaks. Um, I'll, in my, my opinion, there's way too little onboarding and education right now of what's actually happening for me to use this platform independent of a conversation like this. So that's, that's the first thing. There would have to be a lot of hand holding in the beginning because you'd have to be doing a lot of manual onboarding. Um, so whatever your design ends up being, there should be like, you know, when you go to an app and it says, okay, it's your first time using this app, click add new platform. Okay, you're done. Okay, next. It basically scripts, it scripts a pathway for you through to the chat room or whatever it is. So if it's a, a facilitator, you better have a first time script with an onboarding that shows them what, why they're there and what they're doing and what things mean or they're just gonna be totally lost. Um, how much you wanna do that now? Honestly, without a finalized design and version, I would say don't because it would cost too much money and time, but I would manually do it. I would create a video or I would create a video tutorial or I would have you guys do it or I would do a loom where you guys are doing a five minute video screenshot share before anybody uses it and you're onboarding test case users into that. Um, yeah, I mean, the idea of the decentralized autonomous organizations, that's interesting. I mean, I'm wondering who would be the first, who would be good people to start testing this? like. You know, for what, what what are they doing that they would want to use this for? I, I mean, I think the, the DAOs would be very different from, let's say, knowledge keepers that want to teach in a simple way a lot of people. Um, I guess I guess just like you're saying, remind. I mean, each person is going to need a lot of handholding to to help them with the design. I would think. I mean, I have, I have Lori Renton just bought 20 card sets. So she's, quite, she's, she's positioned well to have a test group go through using the cards physically and then having the things online. So that's, that's sort of like the low hanging fruit right now. Um, also, there's a, I have a connection with the Songhees uh, First Nations and they, their, their economic development officer says they have uh, connection to 12 different cities and so that could be another test group because she seemed pretty interested in the whole thing anyway like there's there's a lot of probably people who could use it it's just finding the the right first people that can uh where there's a lot of alignment and yeah well, yeah my 
my feeling is that the, you know, I think what we should go after first is something that we can sell so that we can get money to build everything else. So I think that could be the focus of the first version is, you know, something that is marketable, you know, not to McDonald's or some, some evil corporation, but to something that we, that someone will pay for that we can take that money and then build everything, hire more people, you know, et cetera, build the other versions for, for everything else. That's my opinion. Anyway, I've been saying that before. Mm. But what would that yeah, well, be? I guess getting it to the point where you can sell it, you have to iron out some kinks or whatever, like that people are, are using it, right? Yeah, for sure. I, I think you're just looking at the, the end destination pathway that whatever we are building at some point, there is a, a way to sell it. So might as well test with the people who would buy it. Exactly, because if you want to test people who might buy it, who that best be test group is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, you know, we got a, f a few more stages to go. I think. Hmm. Okay. But it was exciting to see in terms of just like the concept, um, and actually being able to use this. Um, I'm curious why you have the word missions though. Um, I think, you know, just looking at, it's a good way to sort of organize a, a learning lesson you know, to have a beginning, middle and end to have something that most people in their minds and missions, it's sort of like a game like type of thing to do. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause if this is a learning tool, that's different than if it's like a business tool where you're prioritizing more for people to, um, create a product or a project or an event. And that's what I was wondering, um, maybe like language interface, maybe they can call it what they want, but you suggest it. Mm. Or maybe it's yeah. admissions. I mean, maybe- I mean, admissions is more fun. I think- Yeah, I think for different, uh different markets it should be worded colored every you know look different hey guys yeah. what's your mailing address we're in costa rica though you're gonna send it out here yeah planes go there don't they they do go here um i don't know what the mail delivery is i'm sure it's pretty all right i can send you an address out here yeah send me an address to send you something Uh, amazing that you guys have got this far though to take it to this place and now if you wanted to show it to someone I mean, i'm just wondering if you can get it to where even from here either you get some investment in it from here or uh you have like a, 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 a an entry level product or something that doesn't require this much complexity that someone could start using yeah, we originally built a second or a different thing as well. Like we can run you through that in like a couple minutes here. Uh, this was like about eight minutes before I got another um, engagement. Oh yeah, no, we'll be we'll be quick. I mean, this is this was put together in a, for a specific cause. Obviously, the Old Growth Forest Protection Coalition Show Chat Frenzy Command Center. <laughs> that was like kind of our example case. Um, yeah. But this was a different way. Like before, we even built the chat stream. We built this thing in order to be kind of like a hopefully more intuitive walkthrough of how to build a mission. Um, and uh, seven seconds is apparently a little bit longer than seven seconds, but it should load soon. I think it's two minutes. That progress bar is creeping. <laughs> Classic uh, old tech progress bar here for sure. Holy cow. So you like New Zealand? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, very little crime compared to Canada, which I didn't realize had a lot of crime until I got here. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I was reading the papers a couple months ago. There was... Uh, 
the police were were pursuing a car um, and the car, someone in the car pulled a gun out and shot at the police. And then the newspaper said, of, of course, the police pulled over right away and stopped pursuing. Uh, our officers' lives are very important, blah, blah, blah. Later, the gun was recovered or something. But I mean, wow. in most places, they would they would just call more cops and shoot back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Oh, here we go. So, yeah, this is kind of, um, you know, a little bit of a hand walking system of, of, okay, you know, step one, choose a meta communication field, you know, perhaps business. Step two, you know, choose communication space, uh, maybe group space. Um, you know, so it kind of walks them through a little bit. There's no tutorial of what these things are, but it, it does kind of tell them what to do each time. Um, select the main activity, activity uh, perhaps shared knowledge community. Uh, maybe economics, mission step objective. Um, we find a team. And again, here we go. So let's pick the start perhaps. And then same thing, you can pick a random lens. Uh, you can choose one. Um, it's a lot to choose from right there. And yeah, same, same process or same uh, process of creating a mission here, just a different kind of system um, of actually choosing it. Um, can you, it's a can you bring up that, that thing of the multiple chat rooms? The first thing we did? Is that still, you said something might be wrong with that. No, that's, yeah, that's not currently functioning. Because there's so, anyway. also a way to see yeah. like, all the different chat rooms kind of at once and you could choose to, to sort of monitor them. I thought that was also very interesting too. Um, anyway. Yeah, so that that's it. That was just the, the other kind of process here of creating a, a chat room if you're preferring to do it more like this. Yeah, I mean, my my sort of leaning is always how can you err towards greater simplicity and that's sometimes what what can you trim out that like either steps or like things that users have to consider or think about um, um at least probably in the beginning because i think when something's quite complex in the beginning people are like okay they just get a little bit um hard for them to, to use it unless it's a very clear use case that requires that complexity and then someone's grateful that you created it that way because they're like finally something that like addresses the complexity of my needs but if it's not that then it has the opposite effect no like yeah. I think what you see right here is something a tool a facilitator would use who'd had some training in right in terms of of how to do all this and then they would be bringing people into the chat who who don't know how yeah, I got to keep remembering that. Mm -hmm. so, so again, it's sort of like a, a higher level educational technology, I think of that is sort of assuming that they get training with it. Cause I, I don't, it's, it's not being, it wouldn't be, I just come in the door and use it except for the people that were invited, I think. And then uh, that's the facilitator's yeah. job is to sort of take them through the process. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Mm. Got it. I stand behind my programming and I'm willing to program more. That's where I stand. <laughs> it's great to have access to, I mean, I've only used to choose the remedy. So for me, that's been my experience with what you created and it works well for, for me and my needs. So it's kind of cool to see this as like, oh, okay, so here's how you could use things further right that's just sort of like the gateway drug right like you just come in and just do like a little divination and then this is more advanced remember that that uh technology you invited me to where the people would walk around and then all of a sudden be in a room together and then you could yeah. see what they're like this to me would be part of a programming system that would be programming that and so then you mm -hmm. walk into the room and then it's sort of like it's designed for this to occur um, that would be more of an ideal kind of thing. Maybe it's virtual reality. 
maybe it's a uh, different mediums of, of communication, but it's kind of like, it's the main thing is like programming rooms where sp specific conversation takes place with a specific goal. And that that's, that's the sort of like the that's a good idea. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, I guess for me, I would, um, I always, I agree with Sam, I think trending towards simplicity is always the key, right? Um, and what needs to be displayed on screen at what time for what function is really important. There's a tendency to want to display the whole thing on screen and all of the pieces on screen simultaneously, right? Yeah. But it's like, that's not necessarily the best. And this is where I think having a UI UX person come in, I mean, they'll tell you, not me, right? Um, the best book ever written on UI UX is called Don't Make Me Think, right? Uh, it's called Don't Make Me Think. And I highly suggest you get it, Elijah, and you as well, Nova. Uh, I know you're not going to be ultimately the designer, but I just think that book is just so brilliant because it talks about how our neurology works. And it talks about designing according to our current neurology. And it looks at like, what are people using now? What are pathways of the mind that people are already used to grooving by and understanding? And if you can build what you're building and augment those neural pathways without trying to rewrite them, that's where most people have a lot of success, right? Um, if you try to build something completely different where the neural pathways are completely rewiring from the start and lay it all out, there's no way. They're just gonna go into instant overwhelm and drop it. So the intelligence behind the system is there the sophistication and the intelligence of the inflow is there. None of what you're building in terms of the intelligence needs to be there, but the staging of the visuals, the staging of understanding so that it's really familiar is I think what needs a lot of work here. I'm gonna be fully honest. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, um, I mean, can I, can I hijack both? the conversation for just a second? Ask if you guys would be interested in uh, uh, giving me some, some critical feedback one day on, on the game that I made. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Cool, cool. I, I really yeah. hope you guys want to play in the next round because there, if you, <laughs> I, I think you have a lot of fun. I might, you know what? I have so little experience. I don't play a single computer game, not one. You don't and have I to this one. Huh? I'll, I'll coach you. Okay. Yeah, no, I love, I, I have been looking for a game, actually, and actually, to be honest, I have been thinking about it, that I don't really play a game right now. You'll like the strategy of it. There's, it's a thinking game. Mm. And you have to go, Ramayan, right? That's it? Yeah. Thank you very much for, for being here and seeing this. Great to see you guys. Yeah. And I'd, I'd love to chat one-on-one -on -one soon, just to chat and catch up and everything. Sure. Nova, do you want to get my contact from Elijah and let me know when you want to show us your game? Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. And I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Yeah, see, see you guys. guys. Later. Much Bye. love.